Bigger isn't necessarily better, and that certainly is true for choosing the right bike saddle. It is easy to think that the wider, the softer the saddle, the more comfortable it will be, but actually there's far more to choosing the right saddle for you. And I know that it does come down to personal preference to a certain extent, but I'm gonna do my best to let you know what options are out there for cycling and for triathlon. But I have to apologize to all of our male viewers because slightly selfish of me, we're gonna be looking at the topic that I know more about, and that is women's saddles. It's hard to know where to start with this video and also the hunt for the correct saddle. There are so many options. And in some ways, as women, we are quite spoiled because we've got the selection of standard or male saddles, and also a growing array of women-specific saddles. Now, it's brilliant that there is such a large choice, but that doesn't mean that any women-specific saddle will do. There's still a lot to consider. And before we go any further, I just want to point out, if you are one of those really lucky people that is completely happy and comfortable on your bike saddle, please don't change it, unless obviously you're going to be changing your bike position or the type of riding you're doing, then stick with that, because I can tell you there'll be a lot of jealous people out there. However, if you're not happy, then think about what could be causing these issues. Now, comfort on the saddle isn't necessarily down to the saddle itself. Your riding position, the type of riding, and your physical conditioning can all play a part too. So before going out to buy a new saddle, it's best to address these problems, otherwise you might just be delaying finding a more deep-rooted problem. When riding your bike, you have three points of contact, your hands, your feet, and your bottom. And if there's too much pressure going through any of these areas, then you'll soon start to notice some pain and or numbness. And when you're sat in the saddle riding, the majority of force will naturally be going through your bottom onto that saddle, more so than through the handlebars and the pedals. Now it's easy to see exactly where your contact points are with your hands, it's quite visible, and with your feet on the pedals. But when it comes to your backside, it's less visible and it's hard to know the exact contact points until it's too late and you start to feel uncomfortable. Right, let's get into detail on that main contact point, your bottom. Now, men and women, unsurprisingly, sit on their seat bones. So if you are sat down watching this or not anywhere too public, then have a feel. They're basically the bones at the bottom of your pelvis. And if you're sat slouched on the sofa right now, you'll probably find you're sat more on the fleshy part and not on your seat bones. But if you've got good posture or, like us, you're riding a bike, that's when you'll find most of the pressure will be going through your seat bones. For example, if you have a about town bike, then you are going to be very upright and that will be the majority of the pressure going through the fleshy part and your seat bones. If though, like most of us, you're on a road or a time trial bike, your pelvis is naturally gonna be rotated further forwards as you reach forwards. And this is then gonna put pressure on the soft tissue parts that you don't want pressure. So that's where women's specific saddles come in. Most saddles come in different widths, but how do you know how wide your bottom is? Well, for this one, it's probably not a good idea to ask your friend, as we're not talking about your whole bottom, we're actually talking about the distance between your seat bones, and admittedly, this is quite hard to measure. There are some special devices out there for it, or you could go and get a bike fit and have a saddle mapping session when basically you sit on a saddle with pressure pads and it will then show you where those pressure points are. But obviously, an overall bike fit will look at the far bigger picture, and we've already alluded to the fact you need to address all the areas before going too specifically onto the saddle. So one of the first things you want to check is that you've got your saddle at the right height. So a simple test for this is sit on your bike nice and level so your hips are square and then put your pedal down to six o'clock and rest your heel on that pedal and your leg should be straight but your knee isn't quite locked out and that'll give you a rough idea although obviously when you're moving it will feel a little bit different. The other easily adjustable area is the front end is you can change the distance away and the height of your handlebars and this will then affect your position on the saddles. The further you are away, the more anteriorly rotated your pelvis will be, which will then naturally put more pressure on the soft tissues at the front. But before you veer away from this nice aerodynamic position, I'm going to be discussing the saddle options that can actually solve any potential discomfort, so stick with us. Hopefully you're happy with your bike fit and your position now, so it's time to focus on the saddles and to avoid unwanted pressure on your private parts. Women's saddles have been designed with a cutout or a groove, but as you can see, the choice doesn't end there. So to narrow it down, you need to ask yourself a few questions. What type of riding are you going to be doing? Are you predominantly on a mountain bike? Maybe you're doing time trials and triathlon, or it's mainly road riding you're doing. Then you need to think about your budget. 
Although on this point, I would say don't squint because if you can find something comfortable, you can't actually put a price tag on that within reason. Then it's what type of rider you are, if you're gonna be racing or riding for leisure, and also how many hours you're planning to spend in the saddle. Saddles do vary per discipline, but not as much as you might think. And fashion has played a big part in the past as to what bike saddle looks good on which bike, but we're seeing a move away from that as women are finding a saddle that they're happy with and comfortable with and putting it on whichever bike they're riding. For example, we're seeing more TT style saddles on road bikes because they've got that split nose design, which is really comfortable. And none other than the new GCM presenter, Manon Lloyd, was very kindly talking to me about what saddle she likes. And she actually uses this in Adamo, which she had on her track bike and has now put onto her road bike and apparently quite a few of her teammates are following suit and just to give example of that Manon's actually taken a picture when she had a bike fit recently and it shows the pressure points um, on the saddle and it's all green which is great and there's absolutely no pressure on her sensitive parts either so Manon thanks for sharing that with us really helpful so let's take a closer look at some of these saddles I've got here a few of them are ones that I've ridden in and like we've got Manon's saddle here and also my friend Sarah brought in a couple of saddles which she finds really comfortable she just rides for fun, but she did spend a thousand miles on this saddle in the last summer when she did John O'Groats to Land's End with no problems at all. So it really does come down to personal preference, but there's a few things you want to look at more closely as well that do vary. All of them have some degree of cutout, as I've already mentioned, but there's a difference in how wide and how long that cutout is. And then some of the saddles have a ridge in as well or a cutout there, and it's how deep and how long that is you want to consider. And then there's the softness of a saddle. And like I mentioned earlier, softer isn't always better. For example, if the cushioning just squashes to nothing after a few minutes, it's actually gonna be doing you less benefit than a firmer saddle that will still give you that correct pressure distribution. However, if you're wanting something that's gonna give you that more shock absorption, and you're gonna be riding, say, some really bumpy terrain for quite a long way, you can even consider a saddle with springs built into it. But for something more subtle, then consider the material that the rails of the saddle are made from. Carbon has very little flex and give, but if you were to go for a metal option, you'll find a little bit more flexibility and movement through your saddle that way. The width of the saddle can also affect your comfort and wider might look more comfortable, but you need to make sure that you've got that correct pressure distribution. And as you are riding your bike, you're naturally more forward rotated and you'll find that less of the fleshy part of your bottom is on the saddle than you might think. So that's when you need to consider the nose and the width of the nose of the saddle. If it's too wide, you might find you get some chafing on your inner thighs. And that can be a problem with the time trial saddles. And I personally actually use cable ties to um, tie together the rails at the bottom to just bring it in slightly narrower to find that comfort. Well, sticking with the nose of the saddle, you'll notice that the biggest difference between these road saddles compared to the time trial triathlon saddles is the fact that these two have got a split nose and these haven't. And that's because when you're in a time trial position, your hips are more rotated forward, so there's more pressure on the front sensitive parts and that gap is obviously necessary for that. And these ISM style saddles are actually really popular for both men and women. And it's worth noting, whilst we're talking about comfort and finding the right saddle for you, that ISM are one of the brands that actually um, will let you have the saddle to trial for 30 days and if you don't like it you can send it back and get a full refund and I think quite a few other brands do that too and it's something I'd really recommend. Cost obviously plays an important part in any decision making process when you're buying something new. I completely understand that but if you can find a saddle that means you can have hours and hours of riding your bike in complete comfort, then it's gotta be worth a little bit of an investment. And some of the more expensive saddles are expensive because they've had a lot of research put into them. I know that Physique put a lot of research and um, development into this saddle, the Lucy, and as a result, it's become one of the very popular women's bike saddles. And another thing to consider that a cheaper saddle does tend to weigh a little bit more. So you need to think about your overall goals and whether you need to consider that into it as well. Well, the best bit of advice I can give is actually go out and try different saddles. As much as it's brilliant to chat with friends and see what people have on their bike, we've all got different anatomy and we ride in different ways. So what works for one person won't necessarily work for you. And once you have found that magic solution, that saddle that's great, just ensure you've got it set up on your bike correctly. So it needs to be level or horizontal. And I must admit that I had a saddle a while ago that I found so uncomfortable that I actually ended up tilting the nose down just so it would take the pressure off. But all this did was mean that I had loads of pressure going through my hands and because I was trying to stop myself from sliding forward. So make sure you've got the right saddle and then the right setup too. And finally, the part that goes between your bottom and the saddle, your cycle shorts. And it's really important to make sure you've got a well-fitting pair of shorts and you definitely don't wear underwear underneath them. And again, for the reasons we've already talked about, go for a women's specific pair. 
Well, that has been a lot to take in, I know, but I will just finish by saying it's really worth taking a little bit of time now and effort in the process of finding the saddle because once you've got the one, it can absolutely transform your enjoyment for cycling. Trust me, I found out the hard way. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Give us a thumbs up like if you have. And if you hit that globe on screen, you'll get all of our videos at GTN. Just let me know how you get on with finding a saddle or if you've got one that works for you. You can do that in the comments section below. And if you want to see a video on a bike fit, well, Fraser went and had one. You can see that video just here. And if you want to learn a little bit more about comfort versus aero, there's a video on it just over here.